Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mangus and I welcome you guys to another Fire Emblem character spotlight. Today we're taking a look at a very fascinating character from Fire Emblem Awakening, the twisted blood endorsing dark mage Henry. Henry is quite unique in that his character is quite different in the Japanese and English versions of the game. In this spotlight I will go over both of them and reflect on their differences and talk a little bit about why I think the changes were made. Henry is a young man with quite a bit of emotional baggage. He joins Krom's army despite living in Plagia, the country Krom is fighting against, simply because he loves bloodshed. He always has a smile on his face, which is noted to be quite unnatural, and his sense of morality is twisted beyond words. In the English version of the game, Henry was sent to a magic school at a very early age by his parents, whilst in the Japanese version he was sent to an orphanage instead. In both versions, however, he was subjugated to a lot of mental and physical abuse in these places. This resulted in him being slow to feel pain and becoming more and more emotionally closed off as the years progressed. Aside from this, Henry's backstory is largely unknown, and only revealed through glimpses and glimmers here and there through various support conversations. Due to being a neglected child, it is revealed that Henry preferred the company of animals, and at one point he befriended a wolf. The wolf, however, got killed by the residents of a village Henry was living in as it came to visit him, and this caused Henry to go into a killing frenzy and slaughter every single person living there. Henry is also apparently renowned in Plagia. Tarya describes him as the silver-haired boy with great sorcery, who is always accompanied by a flock of ravens. Henry is a small-framed boy, who by the looks of it is in his mid-teens. He has silvery hair and extremely pale skin. He is dressed in dark robes with Plagian ornaments, and always displays a hollow smile on his face. He is very often seen in the company of ravens and other animals. Henry's personality is very complex and quite different in the two versions of the game. In the original Japanese version, Henry is a lot more depraved and troubled, whereas the English version portrays him a lot more like a comic relief character with a love for bad puns. In both versions, however, Henry has an unnatural fascination with blood and violence, most likely stemming from his abusive childhood. He can pretty much be described as a psychopath, though he does show he is capable of harboring real emotions, as can be seen in a support conversation with Olivia, where he cries after almost losing her. It is quite obvious that the Japanese version of Henry seemed a little too dark, and was toned down in the English version to make him more appealing to the Western audience, which I think is quite sad, as they took one of the only characters in Awakening with real depth and turned him into a simple comedian with some issues on the side. It's almost like the people outside of Japan never got to experience the real Henry, which is a damn shame. Since this is my first Awakening Spotlight, I am going to be talking about Henry as the class he joins with, his normal mode base stats and his standard growth rates. I won't go over his growth rates for each of his reclassing options, nor will I talk about his potential children, as I simply do not have that much experience with pairings in Awakening at all, and will most likely only piss off people who do. As a unit, Henry is one out of two potential dark magic users the player can choose between, the other being Taria. Compared to Taria, Henry is a little bit on the slow side, but he is more accurate and a lot more durable. He has an extremely high skill growth, which complements the inaccurate dark magic quite well and synergizes directly with the Ruin Tome, which is basically a killing edge in book formats. Henry also has a remarkable defense growth of 50%, making him into a good frontline magic user, but his base resistance of 5 and resistance growth of 30% is a little low by Awakening standards, and might make it problematic for him to go up against enemy magic users, which is quite unique for a dark mage. Henry comes with the skills Hex and Anathema, which negates the combat abilities of enemy units in his close vicinity. While Taria also comes with these skills, she is not as fit to be on the front lines and therefore can't make as good use of them compared to Henry. These skills combined with his innate tankiness makes Henry thrive on the front lines, where he can best serve to help other units by reducing the usefulness of enemies. 
Henry can promote to either a Sorcerer or Dark Knight, the first choice allowing him to wield staves and the latter providing him with better mobility, though it also makes him unable to wield dark magic, which can hamper his usefulness. Henry can reclass to a Barbarian, Thief or Dread Fighter, though neither of these options are very useful. Personally, I find Henry to be a better unit than Taria, only hampered by a slightly slower join time. I like my Dark Mage's tanky, especially in conjunction with a Nosferatu tome, and while nothing can compare to Taria's fabulous ass, I still think Henry is a better choice. Thank you for watching this Fire Emblem character spotlights. Let me know who you want featured in the next episode by telling me in the comments section. If you would be so kind as to give this video a like, that also helps out my channel a ton, and if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be automatically notified when the next video is released. At any rate, my name's been Manx, and I'll see you guys next time.